Are there any kind of integrative treatments that you support or recommend? Um, I'm, you know, I'm an allopathic physician, so I don't have a lot of expertise. It's just that. So what I tell my patients is I can't uh, offer them data or even, um, uh, you know, a lot of information on things that I did not study on. However, I think into, I try to discuss, and at least from my, my end, the way I come out is how we can integrate it, but not it be an alternative. It's not this versus that. It's again, if we can use it combined. I have an open discussion with them saying, if you are interested, let me know what you are going to get because it, depending on the side of type of therapy, I want to make sure it doesn't have any harmful effects for one or the other. Or if there's some kind of like timing we can use, you know, to see that they won't have adverse effects. A lot of times it's important to know these, the natural therapies also have to be metabolized because it's something we are putting in our body. So it has to be still processed through our liver, you know, going through the kidneys. And if we are trying to use them while they are on active treatments, which have also known to have processed through the liver and the kidneys and other organs, we want to make sure they are safe to be used together. So our team, our pharmacists and all of us, we do, um, you know, we all work together and, uh, you know, run the list. And there's actually some good, uh, repeated websites through NIH and things. We can also, we can look for drug interactions and make sure it is all safe for them, patients and things like that. So I don't have a lot of expertise. However, if they are talking and they get, you know, we try to see how we can integrate it. Are there any new diagnostics, therapies, or preventions that you're particularly excited about right now? So um, like um, we were, I was mentioning earlier about the CT potentially, you know, to improve like a low dose, you know, to have a better uh, sense, especially for dense breasts, if we can pick up better uh, prevention strategies, like I said, gel and what other strategies we could use, you know, something we don't have to put and see if we can decrease the density. Obviously, if there is randomized trials on, you know, some kind of diet and exercise regimens, which would actually influence inflammation and actually decrease It'll be there. Uh, those things are all good, but you know they're looking at all these uh, novel things. So I'm looking forward to those results. And because you have a lab, have you seen anything there that you're working on in a clinical trial that's particularly exciting that you can share? So there are a couple that we did some pilot trials, and we are trying to figure out, you know, the next steps. One is, um, you know, chemotherapy can cause uh, certain. Sort of, quite a bit of chemotherapy is that a lot of times they cause neuropathy, they cause nerve damage. And, you know, frequently we are like trying to treat after the nerve damage has happened for neuropathy, but we don't have a good way of assessing because we just don't have a good way of figuring out who is at risk for developing neuropathy or like picking it up early to actually study like a prevention strategy for neuropathy and nothing has been really done. So we were one of the first uh, kind, one of the first study we published actually earlier this year, like last year was uh, we actually looked at an MRI technique where we can measure, um, where we can look at feet MRI, like they go into the MR and we look at um, certain velocities of uh, water exchange and then some travel and we can measure the nerve integrity. So with chemotherapy, now we can see how the nerve is being damaged on the MRI. So now we can actually, a non-invasive way, instead of like biopsying the nerve in a non-invasive way, like an MR, and this is without any giving any contrast. So they just go in with their feet in, into the MRI, and we can look at the nerves and changes. So that is one of the first things that we've all looked at, and we were able to see a difference that, yes, with this MRI, we can actually figure out what's going on in the nerves now. So based on that, um, I'm working on a grant to look at uh, a drugs, uh, you know, to actually now intervene because now I can say the drug actually is going to make a difference there because I can figure out a way what's going on with the nerves in a more practical way rather than testing, you know, because biopsies are not practical, but any other testing is subjective. This next one is actually in uh, patients, you know, a lot of the times breast cancer and also prostate and other cancers, they go to the bones and it causes a lot of pain in the bone. Uh, the way we treat pain is, uh, is uh, you know, we do radiation selectively, but majority of times just opioids, but they have their own side effects. So um, there was um, uh, one of our uh, signed, one of the basic scientists, Dr. Vanderov in the Department of Pharmacology, actually they did some mice studies where they found that um, opioids not only, you know, don't treat pain well, but 
they also actually destroy the bones too by you know causing them to be more active like the osteoclasts or the bone eating cells they actually increase that so but what they found was cb2 agonists or the cannabinoid receptor agonists when we use them they can actually protect the bones and also potentially decrease the pain now you know it's hard because we have a lot of drugs we use so we actually did a pilot study by using clonabinol, which is like the medical marinol. Uh, you know, that is the prescription medicine that we use, you know, which has been approved for patients for nausea, for appetite stimulation, um, for patients with cancer chemotherapy, and also for patients who have HIV AIDS, you know, for appetite and for nausea. And we use this routinely in clinic, but that works, uh, that is a cannabinoid agonist, and it, but it works on both CB2 and CB1, you know, both receptors. But um, we did a pilot study and we actually saw that it helps with pain and it was able to decrease the opioid use in uh, those patients also. So um, we are working on publishing it so, uh, right now. But that is a thing we are looking for the next phase or looking for funding to, for the next uh, phase of the trial because you know, Grunabinol is still pretty expensive, <laughs> even though it is generic. <laughs>